As I said in the Aza High 450 review, I had my concerns with that phone that they used on the front panel. Overall, the airflow of the case was pretty good, but I had some negative encounters with these things, so for today, we are going to investigate that and see if with a zero euro budget, we will be able to squeeze a couple of degrees out of this thing. This episode is brought to you by cdcuffers.com. CDCuffers offers a wide variety of software or game keys for a fraction of their usual retail price. You can get your usual PC game codes or even library codes for things like Steam, Uplay and Origin. But the most important part for us are these software codes. Here we can get software activation codes for things like MS Office or Windows 10 for a ridiculously cheap price. And right now you can not only use the promo code TS20 to get a 20% discount, but also combine it with their Black Friday sale to make the already cheap Windows 10 license even cheaper and then even cheaper. If you want to get that nasty activation message away, make sure to head down to the links in the description below and don't forget to use the promo code TS20 and combine it with the Black Friday sale which ends on the 18th of December. Okay, I've already done a bit of preparation. We will be using the same system as last time, a Ryzen 5600X locked at 4.2GHz, a Be Quiet Pure Rock Slim and a Pallet RDX 2060 Super. On top there are now two Noctua NFF12s and in the front I've used the new Intertech RS14 set because they are pushing so much air. Review incoming so hit that subscribe button. Okay, now at this point two things that I wanted to point out about the case. First, if your front fans are huge, you won't be able to fit three 120 fans in the top. It's, it's just a centimeter and it's so annoying, but it's that. The other thing is that this looks kinda cool. I have never mounted front RGB fans in here before, but I definitely regret that. Okay, so now we will do two sets of testing. One where the CPU is being cooled actively by the Be Quiet fan and one where we will rip out the CPU fan and let the case fans handle all of the cooling. While doing this, we will keep an eye on the CPU temps and especially the second run without the CPU fan will be very interesting because then the CPU temps are basically relying only on the case fans alone. So that should amplify the results quite a bit. Anyway, I already did some testing and we get the following results. While hitting the CPU and with all the fans cranked to the max, we had 53 degrees C on the CPU. With the unplugged CPU fan, the CPU went up to 76 degrees C. Okay, so with the new baseline, it's time to do some modding. And compared to the other cases I've done this to, this is fairly easy. Just remove the front panel and there it is. Now you could start to unbend these little hooks here on the side and take out that honeycomb filter on the front, but the foam is so thin that you can basically just pry it out right now. But there is one thing that I do want to point out right now, and this is basically the only real dust filter that the front has. So after I'm done with this, the case will essentially become a big dust collector. So if you have any pets or you generally have a lot of dust and other particles flying around in your house, you may want to think twice before doing this. But this is not about keeping your rig clean, but we are here to maximize cooling, so who cares. Okay, everything is set and done. So, everything is set and done. So it's time to repeat both tests and hope that I'm right or this will become a scrap video. So the first results are in, and without the foam, and with all the fans cranked up to the max, including the CPU, the temperature dropped to 52 degrees. So that's basically a win of 1 degree. Not as much as I expected, but let's not get ahead of ourselves and remove the CPU fan and have a look at the amplified results. No, please do not do this with a system turned on. Do as I say, not as I do. Okay, so now we have all the results. And without the foam and the CPU fan, the temperature dropped to 67 degrees. So a 9 degrees C of a difference. 
And honestly, I have to admit that my initial expectations were so much worse. Only 9 degrees C of a difference is really not worth the hassle and the dirt that you will be throwing inside of your case. But I am really really surprised because I had cases where the difference between foam and no foam was upwards of 20 degrees C. So my honest apologies to Aza for me assuming that they did a shitty job because I just cannot say that removing this will bring you any good if the difference in a real world scenario will be like 1 or 2 degrees. Of course, 1 or 2 degrees may be a lot if you are really into maximizing every single aspect, but for the most part this just wasn't worth it at all. So right now, I will start putting the foam back where it belonged to. Because I was definitely proven wrong. But when I'm doing this, let's wrap this up. I hope that you've enjoyed the video, even though the message was essentially if you own a ASA Hive, don't do anything. But still, you can express your opinion with the thumb up, thumb down and the comment section below. And make sure to be subscribed because next week we will be testing our Ryzen 5600X and see what the difference would be for a normal person that doesn't own a 1000 euro GPU. Hopefully more than this phone. But until then, have a look at one of these totally random videos.